I hope you all are ready to quest today, because today we explore the fan game Pokemon Unbound. What we're gonna be looking at in this fan game for the review, as always, we're gonna be looking at the story, the region, the Pokemon, the gameplay, and a couple other little thoughts that I think of along the way that I think you guys will enjoy. Again, without giving away too much story detail and encouraging you all to try it for yourself. And shout out to the Baby Corn Questers as well as the Full Cop Questers for just having a little bit of extra donation. Thank you guys so much for helping me support this video. All right, now let's get into what is Pokemon Unbound. So Pokemon Unbound is a GBA ROM hack of Fire Red, so you would use a Game Boy emulator to play the game. So before we get into like all the nitty gritty details of that, let's get into the story of Pokemon Unbound. So the story of Pokemon Unbound is that it kind of feels like a continuation to me of the Kalos story, where we found out about that massive war that happened in the Pokemon universe and the ultimate weapon. So where you start off your adventure is you get that little bit of backstory for those of you that maybe haven't played generation six you do get to kind of get a little bit of detail into that once you boot up the game which is awesome because that just means that the creators of this took that into consideration that maybe not everyone played generation six but they heard that this was a really fun fan game so 10 out of 10 for just keeping the fan base informed but what's cool about this is that this is actually kind of like another look at that generation's story. So instead of following the story of what happened to Kalos, we're actually starting our adventure in the Boreas region, which is this made up fan region um, that was actually the region Kalos was apparently having this war with, according to Pokemon Unbound. This is not canon. So once you kind of get all past that and stuff, you start getting into the story, and it's your typical kind of story, which is like you're this character that starts their gym journey, like you're asked to do some errands and things like that, so like you have to go through all these Pokemon gyms um, to become champion, as well as defeat an evil team. But what's really, really cool about the story, in my opinion, is the lore aspect that they kind of utilize really, really well, in my opinion. So a lot of the time, like, you'll see me talk about this on, like, Twitter or, like, in my Discord channels and stuff like that, is that I feel like the Pokemon company kind of doesn't truly utilize the lore of their existing Pokemon in their stories or even really tie in the lore heavily into their stories. But in Pokemon Unbound, I was incredibly, incredibly impressed with how much story detail there was in regard to the overall lore of Pokemon and the lore that they made up for their own region and game. So one of the big ones is that um, Hoopa is obviously the main character of Pokemon Unbound and people are trying to um, unleash its full potential to destroy the region and bring back this war or bring back all these other elements. Um, so there are guardian Pokemon. And what's really, really cool is that they use existing lore of uh, the legendary birds and actually make them really important. Like you have to like protect these legendary birds and the legendary birds are actually seen as these powerful deities, which in the anime, in the like games and stuff, they've been stack encounters, they're legendaries. You can tell that they're super powerful, but in most mainline Pokemon games, they're not really shown off as these very powerful beings. Like they're kind of just an extra thing that you can catch. Even the characters within the games don't really care too much about them. But what's cool is that in Pokemon Unbound, the characters clearly care a lot about these legendary birds as their protectors because they put up monuments to them in their main like mountain towns. So all the legendary birds can be found on top of a mountain and there's a town below it that has a statue of these legendary birds in the middle of it, signifying that these birds hold so much importance in the world of Pokemon Unbound. And I think that's an awesome, and this continues on too with like so many other different legendary Pokemon you meet, such as the Reggie Trio. And like you hear about it with like Giratina and like that there's other powerful Pokemon that exist in the world. You hear this from the NPCs, from the main characters in the game. It's driving this story of you're in a world of incredibly powerful Pokemon and you have to make sure you're up to the task. So as far as the legendary, the box art legendary Pokemon, stuff like that, um, they do a really good job of tying in all of that information. They also do a really good job of making unique 
villainous teams. That's right, I said villainous teams. So there is the main villain organization called The Shadows, and then there is a later one that you encounter called The Light of Ruin. And I think The Light of Ruin is a really, really unique one because they want to bring back this ultimate weapon for a new purpose of resetting everything and kind of like finishing what the Boreas King was setting out to do with the ultimate weapon. So then what happens is that you just run into these characters and they are so detailed. It's incredible. They're incredibly, incredibly detailed where most grunts that you run into of an evil organization, like they have things like poison type Pokemon. They have dark type Pokemon. Oh, why do they have these Pokemon? Because they're evil. They're bad. So you give them bad looking Pokemon. But what's so unique about the Light of Ruin is they use fairy type Pokemon because their mission to them is just. Their mission is very like noble. They want to like bring in, usher in a new era on the Pokemon universe. So they are the light within the darkness. And the organization you first meet called the Shadows does have a little bit more of a sinister feel to them where they are, there's this larger goal of theirs, but they also introduce these new shadow warriors, which are like reanimated corpses of like people and Pokemon, stuff like that, which is kind of wild to me that like po this game is getting into like Pokemon zombies, but they are incredibly, incredibly powerful foes. And again, that's just, there's so many in the mainline games, evil organizations that just talk about these big endeavors of, oh, we wanna unleash this monstrosity upon the world. Whereas I think in Pokemon Unbound, they do such a better job of that by showing what these organizations are capable of. These shadow warriors, the characters in the game talk so poorly of them, of like, these things are monstrosities on this earth. Like they are unnatural. Whatever was used to create them is incredibly, incredibly suffering, even though they might have passed on, their soul is still entwined with it and are suffering. It's just really, really good storytelling and actually makes you want to defeat this evil organization because they actually seem really, really evil. They're not just robbing people with petty theft. They're not just like blowing smoke saying that we want to unleash this evil upon the world. They are literally doing it and you just have to stop them from hitting their highest goal. They've already hit the lower goals. You have to stop them from the from the top one, which is I think just a phenomenal storytelling element to make. Like whenever I had to go do the gym challenges, I didn't want to. I was like, I have to defeat these evil guys. But of course you need HMs and you need the gyms to give you access to those HMs to move forward. But there was a pressure as a player. There was a pressure to like, defeat these evil teams to protect the legendary Pokemon of this region, to protect Boreas from these terrible things that are happening within it. And it's just like such a refreshing way for the story to operate and like for it all to be organized. Like probably one of the best stories I've encountered within a Pokemon game, be it mainline game or fan game for that matter. All right, so now that I've talked a little bit about the story and like some of the bigger elements that I liked about that, let's talk about the region of Boreas. So Boreas is a region that uh, is near Kalos because they were in um, the war type of thing of Kalos, but I think Boreas might also, I said it about the storytelling, this might be one of my favorite Pokemon regions, mainline game and fan game. Like it is a it is a very, very interesting and cool region. So the biggest thing that makes it, I think, stand out the most is when you start the game, you start in the mountains, you start in a frozen biome. So the first Pokemon you run into are rock types and ice types and things like that. And I think that's incredibly important with your storytelling elements and using a unique perspective of the game because you're not this typical kind of like Pokemon character, this gym challenger. Um, you start in this mountain town, which is awesome because most Pokemon games, they have you start in the grassy field area of like, oh, then you find your Bidoofs, your Rattata, things of that nature. Um, but what's cool about this is that, yeah, like you're running into snow runs right away. You're running into spheels early on. Like these Pokemon that normally you find in mainline games so late in the game, it's hard to want to use them. So. It's really cool that um, as a region as a whole, they use a lot of really good diverse biomes and they don't 
really butt up against each other too often. So like, again, one of the things that I always bring up is that in Hoenn, there's just a desert in the corner. There's no real lead up into that, but the world of Boreas is so good that like, you'll be walking down a path and it starts to get like, you start seeing some of the sandy biomes start coming in. And then all of a sudden there's that screen overlay of the like sandstorm, you're in the desert and then you're in a desert town. It's not like you go back to grass immediately. So they took a lot of time building out this unique map and this region that is just so full of life. They have an underground system that goes through the entire region, which you can use as like a fast traveling bike trail and things like that. There's so many different biomes, they just look fantastic. Like again, there's mountain biomes, there's snow biomes, there's like volcano biomes, deserts, you name it, it's in here and it is like just chef's kiss. It's a beautiful looking region. And again, they utilize the different biomes in such great ways that I think the mainline Pokemon games could learn a thing or two from Pokemon Unbound. And now that I've talked about the region, let's talk about probably everyone's favorite thing within the region is the Pokemon within Pokemon Unbound. Uh, Very similar to games like Pokemon Radical Red and things like that, they use a variety of Pokemon from varying different gens. I do not know if they release updates adding in new Pokemon whenever there's a new generation, but I do know that they use Pokemon from uh, the first generation, all the way up to Poke- to generation seven, I believe, when it's Alola. Because they have Alolan Pokemon within the region, and I think that's awesome because a lot of games kind of, I feel like, steer clear of the Alolan Pokemon. They even have Alolan forms that they just call Ninetales. And you have to just guess if it's gonna be an Alolan Ninetales or if it's gonna be the traditional Fire Ninetales. Same with um, they have like Marowaks that do this. They have Sand Slashes and Sand Shrews that do this. Obviously you can find them in the wild within their areas of like, oh, Alolan Ninetales is gonna be found in the mountains. Same with Alolan Sand Slash and things like that. But it's really, really unique and they allow you a wide variety of Pokemon very early on. You're able, like, they make they make it make sense, if that makes sense. So there are some Pokemon that in the normal games, like for, Uh, Pokemon X and Y, for example, you might not encounter, say, a Litleo right away. It might be one of those that they put more in the mountains, the mountainous regions that you don't really encounter right away. Well, because this is a fan game and they have full control over all that kind of stuff, they realize that Litleo is a small Pokemon that takes a bit to evolve into its final version of Pyroar. So they allow you to have it pretty early on. And they do that with all sorts of different types of Pokemon too. So like, you don't have to worry about finding really, really cool Pokemon that are super underleveled way late in the game because, oh, you finally made it to the snowy area. That's also, I think, a really good indication of the Pokemon within the game is the biodiversity. So there's been fan games in the past that I've reviewed where like, it's a thing of, oh, you run into only water Pokemon leading up to this gym, or you run into only electric types leading up to that gym. Whereas here, they do a really, really good job in Boreas of letting the story go through different biomes naturally. So yeah, you might obviously have to run through a grassy route. You find your typical grassy Pokemon, but you're going to a volcano. Once you're in the volcano, that's when you find your rock types, your fire types of all different types of levels and different forms and things like that. Same with the snowy mountains, because you start your adventure up high in the mountains, you run into these ice type Pokemon so much earlier that you can have a much more diverse team as you play the game, as well as your Pokemon don't have to learn the HMs. So that even allows you to use a variety of different Pokemon throughout the game, which I really, really did appreciate because they never outright told you that that you don't have to teach them the HMs, but you don't have to teach your Pokemon the HMs in order for like them to navigate the region minus, I believe it's fly because you do have to access that through the Pokemon uh, like little area of your menu. So the Pokemon of Boreas region are really, really good. They feel really, really organic. And overall, it's awesome. You can find such a variety of Pokemon and use a variety of Pokemon on your team. Um, here's my championship team. Feel free to judge that in the comments. (laughs) 
Hey Quester, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're still watching now, I greatly appreciate it. Feel free to drop a comment or a like, and hey, maybe think about subscribing, and maybe think about going one step further and becoming a membership Quester. So there are three different levels of memberships, and they all have these awesome unique perks. So obviously at the lowest level for 99 cents, you can get uh, gameplay updates via the community tab over here on YouTube, as well as these fun little badges and emotes to use in comment sections or my live streams. Then at the next level, you can have all the same things, but then you actually get access to a members only Discord where you can talk about the game and you can talk about things to other members within the channel that maybe no one else knows about. And so you can have these little private conversations of, hey, did you see the current game update? How cool is this fan game gonna be? And then also there's the final level that you can pick where you get early access to videos. You get another Discord channel where you can ask me questions directly and I will answer them in a members only video that will be posted on YouTube. So hey, why not become a member today? It's awesome, there's lots of fantastic perks to it and it's really cheap. There's cheap different levels you can pick from so think about becoming a member quester today. All right, let's get back to the video. Thank you so much. And yeah, let's get back into Pokemon Unbound. So one of the last things I wanna talk about is the gameplay of Pokemon Unbound. And the gameplay is actually really, really unique because <laughs> it's just, it's an incredibly unique game. So one of the biggest things to start off with, I think, is just looking at the user interface. This might feel really, really minor, but honestly, the user interface and seeing how unique and different it is, I think really speaks volumes to the creators of Pokemon Unbound, that they were willing to go in and make these minor details to fit their game, to fit their creative vision. And I think it'd just be a little bit like unappreciative to overlook this. So it's cool that they revamped the entire menu system. They revamped the bag to never fill up. It's this cool cube thing and things of that nature. But I think one of the biggest things that is gonna change the gameplay from the mainline games is that Pokemon Unbound finally gives players the ability to choose a difficulty level. Right when you boot up the game, you customize your character, which is also really unique for this type of like game, given that it's a Game Boy emulator game. But you also take a short quiz to figure out how hard do you want this Pokemon game to be. And I ended up playing on the vanilla mode because from what I gathered, they just kind of increased, I think the battle numbers and the battle difficulty once you went into like the harder mode. But in all honesty, even playing at the vanilla level, this game plays hard. I, I never felt that I was incredibly under leveled, but the Pokemon and the trainers are smart. They're not just running into like your typical, just like, oh, I'm just gonna use Harden a million times and not actually attack you. The Pokemon and the Pokemon trainers actually have a pretty clever system behind them where they put up a fight and they have items sometimes that help them. There were so many gem items, which is a super underutilized item in my opinion, but so many trainers had these gems on their Pokemon that would power up their next attack because it would be like a bug type using a bug gem and then all of a sudden it's like, bam, big hit from a bug type, which you don't normally expect. So that was really cool. You could customize your gaming experience because again, that allows people to, if you're a hardcore player, then cool. You can play on this harder mode where there's a lot more battles. The battles are gonna be harder. I'm sure the leveling is also like really elevated. Um, or you can play vanilla mode like I did if you just wanna have a fun casual experience. The vanilla mode is still very hard in my opinion. It took me a couple tries to get through some gyms and to get through some other things of that nature. But you do level up pretty quickly, so you do have the universal EXP share. And there were some Pokemon on my team that I thought were getting really overpowered, especially like my starter and my Swana that I had because the Swana was a trade Pokemon, an in-game trade, and so it gained level much faster with the EXP share always being kind of turned on. But I did find out that later on in the game, once I got to the Elite Four, it was actually on par with the Elite Four's leveling system. It wasn't a thing of, I could sweep the entire Elite Four with just one Pokemon or just two Pokemon. It took an entire team and it took a lot of deaths on that team to be able to take down some of these tougher trainers and these tougher challenges. 
mainly because, and we're kind of segueing into my next point, is the gyms and gym leaders in Elite Four aren't just gym leaders and Elite Four members. They have unique abilities that tie into their gyms, some of which are at the first gym, it's foggy. You need a Pokemon with keen eye to not have your accuracy reduced. Any other Pokemon that does not have the ability keen eye is going to struggle trying to hit the opposing Pokemon. And then once you move on to a dark gym, you actually, if you are not a dark type Pokemon, you get inflicted with a little bit of damage at the end of every single turn. All the gyms have some kind of niche to them where you're like, there's a cool little twist you don't quite think about. It's too much to explain, but seriously, you gotta play it, it's so much fun. And then because this game involves Kalos, it involves a lot of references to Hoenn, there is the concept of Mega Evolution. So, you can Mega Evolve your Pokemon in this game, and what I think is really, really cool about this is that uh, with your game interface, you actually just click the Start button once you have um, a Mega Stone equipped into your Pokemon, and once you get your Mega Bracelet and things like that, you can actually select the type of Mega accessory you want to have. I think you can have an anklet, a bracelet, a necklace. I'm sure I've missed a ton and ton of information about this game because Pokemon Unbound is a crazy big game. Like, there are so many unique aspects to this game that I'm not even sure I can cover all in one video. So please ask questions down below. If you're a member, ask questions within the member discord so that you can maybe get some things answered and things like that. And I might have to even make a part two. If there's enough questions, I'll make a part two of this video explaining things because there's just so much good information with this game. Pokemon Unbound is a fan fantastic fan game to play and there's just so much love so much heart so much detail that goes into it that again i just i'm not sure i can cover it all in one video like there's even post game stuff that you can do they make the game playable after you become pokemon champion there's so many unique new things you can do during the main story and then there's even more unique things you can do after the story because you have access to all the hms the world is your oyster in boreas you can go anywhere you want so seriously i cannot recommend pokemon unbound enough it's one of probably the best fan games i've played so far in the series of reviewing fan games i really really do love it and if you love it make sure you leave a comment down below and subscribe to corn's quest so you get more fan game reviews as i make them and let me know down in the comments too what fan game you might want to see me review next uh, i'm always looking for new fan games and new games to play so leave a comment down below please subscribe if you like the video and yeah until next time happy questing y'all